Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to Evil Golf. Today I'm feeling pretty hospitable. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of my indoor garage setup. Something that I've been putting together over the past couple of years. It's a, the key here is that it's nice and cheap for the most part. Um, got enough space. I got a great partner that allowed me to have the entire garage. Uh, my wife is pretty dope. But you'll see that she has a ton of DIY stuff scattered all around. But for the most part, she gave me the garage to allow me to, to have the space to practice and to try to stay sharp. All right, super excited to have you. Let's get started. So I'll let you know where I got everything from, round about how much everything costs, and I'll put the links in the description. Check it out below. All right, first, let's get started with the most important piece the net. I got this off of Amazon, probably about 70, 80 bucks, no more than that. Um, I started off with a seven by 10 and because of a couple of minor accidents, don't tell the wife. Uh, yeah, I might've put a couple holes in the drywall. <laughs> because of that, I wanted to expand it. So I got a 10 by 10 and as you can see also, I put a couple of mattresses, an old mattress behind there, uh, a la Tony Finau. So I use that to add a little bit of a buffer between the net and the garage wall. Again, the net was only about 70 bucks straight off of Amazon, no muss, no fuss. I'd say that it's very durable for the most part. I think I had my first one for about two, maybe three years after a bunch of iron shots and wood shots in the same spot, the net would start to wear. And actually I put a bunch of holes in the net. So what I did was took some zip ties and close the net up after a while hitting those same zip ties with a couple of shots they would break into pieces and then we start back over again oh and one more quick note about the net it has no cover so a lob wedge not a good idea sand wedge a 56 degree is a little risky um, when i hit that it kind of clips right at the top the net just catches it so i would not recommend using anything over like a 56 degree it's probably self-explanatory, but I had to learn the hard way. The next most important piece would be the mat. This mat, uh, I think I got it off of Amazon as well. It's probably the most expensive piece of your, your setup. There are a ton of options that are pretty cheap, but the bright side is it's lasted ever. It's a good mat. It takes all my shots, irons, wedges, three woods, whatever. It has a couple of holes for your driver or for your tees that you can use for your driver or your woods, whatever you're practicing. If you're gonna invest in developing an indoor practice space, you definitely wanna put some money towards your mat. If you find that your mat starts to get a little worn on one side, all you really gotta do is flip it around and you gotta, it's like having another, a brand new mat. As you can see, I think it's only about three feet wide, maybe five feet long. I had another plank that I used to use for putting. I put it side by side so that I can broaden my stance. That'd be my only criticism is that this T-hole is right in the middle. So making you know your driver's stance, you gotta widen your stance up. If you have your back foot off of the mat, it makes it a little awkward. So I added another foot or so. But all in all, good mat. Underneath here is a couple of those interlocking gym mats. I had a few spare laying around. So I put them under here to kind of deaden the ball when it hits the ground. Otherwise, it'd be hitting on this concrete in the, the garage and the ball could ricochet and go anywhere. And also we had some leftover felt, whatever this stuff is. And uh, I think that about covers it. All right, another helpful practice aid um, that I got a couple years ago was this putting mat. Uh, got this from Dick Sporting Goods. I wanna say it's nine feet long, uh, has two target holes, eh, pretty helpful. Nice little ball return, uh, it's well constructed. I just put it off to the side. Uh, so after I take a couple shots, come over here, do a little bit of putting. I like it because it has this little incline, incline slope uh, right in front of the hole. So it teaches you to kind of push all the way through, make sure your ball has enough velocity to get to the hole. Again, something that's pretty helpful. You can get out here, do a couple putts. You see, I got a bunch of balls lined up. Just kind of roll through them whenever you got some time. It definitely helps me. Something I forgot, 
uh, but it's also very important when it comes to having the mat. Not really needed, but it's helpful. Little ball bin. Got a little ball bin off of Amazon. Holds a ton of balls. Easy peasy. Rake and bash. That's all you need. Uh, got a couple of alignment rods and you'll see some other training materials that I have around the house also. Okay, so I lied. Maybe the most expensive piece, which is completely optional, would be the iPad setup. Uh, I got an iPad tripod and an iPad like holder for the tripod. Um, I use this to get some instant feedback so I can watch my swing, replay my swing, uh, anything that I might be working on to see if I'm actually executing that thing. If you got a loved one or just your phone, you can certainly use that. Uh, a lot of us already have the phones, have the cameras, just pop it up on a tripod, get some instant feedback of yourself if you have that space, if you got the time, you got the inclination, go for it. I highly recommend it. I'm definitely gonna upgrade my storage here, but, but I wouldn't be me if I wasn't trying to share the game with my family. So as you can see, I got a couple spare sets of clubs, one for my baby girl, one for my wife, and one for any guest or friend who might be trying to pick up the game. These are actually my old irons, the TaylorMade MCs Forged. Love these irons. I still carry around a three iron in my bag just in case I'm feeling a little froggy and want to experiment. That was my bread and butter back in the day. Um, and also, one last thing, uh, a shag bag. You can use this to shag your balls here or like if you go to an actual practice facility, a uh, driving range, or if you go to like a putting green somewhere, you're working on your chipping and your putting, a little shag bag will always come in handy. All right, and last but not least, I have a table set up with a bunch of random like training stuff. Of course, I have the swing caddy. Now this little bad boy comes in handy when you're practicing regardless. If you checked out my what's in the bag episode, I really like this thing. Um, you can use it indoor, outdoor. Of course, your numbers get a little funny on the indoor. You gotta learn to trust it or not, you know, take it with a grain of salt in certain cases. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. Swing Caddy SC200, I'll put the link in there also. Something cool that I just picked up was this guy, Mr. Heater, propane heater for when you're riding around in the cold. I love it. Uh, it's coming handy in the garage also, so you can use it indoor, outdoor. Obviously, caution, when it comes to uh, carbon monoxide. So make sure you have something open, open a door, open a window, whatever you got. Um, and of course I got a couple extra gas tanks for it. Uh, let's see what else we have. I got the uh, arm trainer here. Slide that bad boy on like so. Keep the arms in the right position going back. Definitely need some work here. But I find that this is a pretty useful tool. I've been able to feel when I have my arms in the right spot going back and through. I really like it. This guy, not so much. It's supposed to sit on the back of your wrist to kind of help with the bending and bowing. But as you can see, if I still have that bad habit, it'll, it'll just slide out the way in my backswing. So not really helpful, but I understand the purpose of it. And that's it folks. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my indoor setup. Again, it's not super expensive. A couple of expensive pieces here and there, but it's totally worth it if you wanna to try to stay sharp in the summertime or in the wintertime. It's winter here, it's getting cold. I'm really trying to fine tune a couple of things before we get back outside in the spring. So hopefully this is gonna help me out and salute to you guys, man. I really appreciate all the support. I really appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the new subscribers. Thank you so much for checking out Evil Golf. And if this is your first time uh, checking out a video, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate that. Leave a comment. Let me know how you plan on staying sharp in the winter time. I think no matter how you plan on staying sharp, somebody might benefit from hearing, hearing from you. Let me know if you're enjoying this kind of content. Like if you like the equipment setup kind of discussion, Maybe that'll be something that I can start working towards, putting out more videos of that nature. Any feedback is good feedback. I really appreciate hearing from you folks. I know this isn't like the, the Rick Shields hit studio, but it's home and it's helpful. So again, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, leave a comment. Really appreciate you guys. I'll catch y'all next time.